It's where pearl white sand meets crystal blue water as far as the eye can see. This is something magical. This is being one with Mother Nature. It's pretty awesome. Where thrilling days flow into luxurious nights. You're in a tree house with a woman rubbing clay and leaves on you. I mean, sure. Where culture and nature live in perfect harmony. I'm excited to try some jungle chicle. And tradition, beauty, and fun all roll into one. Woohoo! It's where else but Cancun and Riviera Maya. Oh, this is Destination Mexico, Quintana Roo, next on First Look. Eastern side of the Yucatan Peninsula, bordered by the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea, is Mexico's youngest state, Quintana Roo. With miles of immaculate sand beaches and pristine turquoise waters, it's no wonder why resort areas Cancun and Riviera Maya are premier tourist destinations. Welcoming us to this paradise state is the governor himself, Carlos Joaquin. Hello, Ashley. Welcome. Quintana Roo, welcome to Cancun, La Riviera Maya, que es un lugar, un destino extraordinario, con playas bellas, transparentes, con arenas blancas, una selva tropical extraordinaria, que además de sus recursos naturales, tiene una infraestructura turística extraordinaria también, con hoteles, restaurantes, muchos servicios, lugares donde divertirse, de día, de noche, Así que, bienvenidos. Gracias. <laughs> so with that, welcome to Cancun, Mexico. But for this adventure, I'm leaving the town's famed hotel zone and going 30 miles offshore to snorkel with the mother of all sharks. So tell me, what's a whale shark? This is the biggest fish in the sea. It's also a shark. The ones we get here are about 25 feet long. Dead. Which these are vegetarian sharks. Okay, I was it's just going to ask, what do they eat? Because, you know, I want to keep all of this together now. <laughs> what you see them doing right now is they swim through the surface with the mouths open uh -huh. and they filter all the eggs. It's pretty cool. It is, isn't it? Oh, they're everywhere. <laughs> oh my gosh, look. Wow. And are they dangerous? They are not dangerous. How it's, do you know? Well, I've done it long enough and I'm still... You're still here. One piece. You're all intact. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> with Mother Nature, it's pretty awesome. They are like gentle giants. I mean, they're massive. When you're in there, you're like, oh God, they're so big. But they're really cool and calm, and I just sort of gained confidence, and I got pretty close up to one. On their back, they have these little white dots, which are like fingerprints, so each one is individual and unique to them, which is quite cool. Whew, that was awesome. Swimming next to a whale shark that goes completely vertical is quite extraordinary. And to think, this is just the start of our journey, bringing us now just a few miles east to Isla Mujeres. Spanish for Island of Women, Isla Mujeres is one of Quintana Roo's oldest Mayan towns and the epitome of island life. <sighs> Illustrated by colorful narrow streets, beautiful bright beaches, and a cuisine best experienced seaside. Let's talk about the island cuisine. Is there a certain cuisine that is purely just for this region? Good beaches, good fish, and Mayan flavors. So that's Zama. That's what we invented here, island cuisine. Amazing. Zama is also widely recognized for promoting the well-being of the region's ecosystem by serving the local delicacy known as lionfish. So this fish was from Indonesia and in Florida was in an aquarium and with Hurricane Katrina it broke and went into the ocean. Wow. It started reproducing but we have a problem because it's eating all the little fishes, all the little eggs and all the materials around the coral reef. Wow. Then we have unbalanced the ecosystem in the water. But normally it has like a giant grouper that eat it okay. but they don't have it here in these waters. What's his technique he's got over there? Cutting into very thin slices, what we call a sashimi, or what we can call like uh, in Spanish a tiradito. Tiri, tiri. Tira. 
Tira. Dito. Dito. Tira dito. Tira dito. Tira dito. Tira dito. Okay. For the recipe, we're going to be putting some red onion, cucumber, cubed tomatoes, diced jicama. This is a root, very local. Mm. And then we have a little bit of ginger. And then we have two more secret ingredients. Sesame oil. And this is what we call a garlic oil. Yes. We make a, a roasted garlic mm. oil. I like that. That's not a secret ingredient secret but we just told everybody hi <laughs> mix it with a spoon looks amazing put it on top of it oh we put always a piece of the tail it's like the the certification there is not another fish that has these colors on the tail wow looks delicious came from your backyard shall we dig in yeah please the flavors in that Mmm, you can tell the freshness and that bit of salt is so delicious. But also some mezcal can be great with this. Yeah, I like your style. <laughs> but we have some other specialties, so I hope you come back to Sama and taste some other things. I, I know a guy, right? So you can hook me up? <laughs> Muchas gracias. You're welcome. Coming up, we're hitting Cancun's jungle tour, face first. <laughs> <laughs> First Look is sponsored in part by Cancun, the jewel of the Mexican Caribbean. Plan your trip now at Cancun.travel. Whether rotating 300 feet above ground in Playa Linda or shopping around La Isla, Cancun from any vantage point is magnificent. But to truly experience Cancun, we need to turn things up a notch and hit the water. A flyboard is a watercraft designed with jet-powered boots meant to thrust the rider 50 feet in the air. The trick, of course, is staying upright under all that pressure. I don't know if I'm gonna make it look like that, but I'm hoping some of my dance background, my core, my center, will uh, come into play. <laughs> <laughs> My tour guide went first and he looked really cool and made it look really easy and then <laughs> I got up there and I definitely uh, face planted a few times. Tired. It's a good workout flyboarding. It's fun, but then all of a sudden you're like using all of these different intricate muscles to stay up. And I was getting short of breath a bit, so for sure, it's it's a good workout. <laughs> for those looking for a different kind of ride, the jungle tour might be more your speed. Thank you for coming to Marina Sunrise. This is the cutest marine here on Cancun. Yes, it is the cutest. Let's talk about the jungle tour. So we're going to explore the mangrove channels, all the lagoon here on Cancun, to a ride to the National Marine Park and spend some time doing snorkeling. Sounds amazing. So you're trusting me driving this thing? Yeah, we're going to teach you how you want to do it. Feeling that warm ocean breeze on our way to the second largest reef in the world, it's Pretty obvious why snorkeling in Cancun is so spectacular. The water is beautiful. I mean, the color is so blue and so clear. You can see everything. I saw some cool fish, some little Nemo, some striped guys, some barracudas. And then we got to see some really cool statues. Every year, hundreds of visitors flock to the water surrounding Cancun to swim among life-size sculptures permanently installed by groundbreaking underwater museum, Musa, in a brilliant effort to conserve the region's precious coral reefs. Last year, we had more than 300,000 people visiting Musa instead of the natural corals, the art of conservation. The art of conservation. How many sculptures are actually underwater? We have 516 underwater in three different areas. The one you visited is called Punta Sam with nine different sculptures. We have also manchones. And in there is this installation that's called the Silent Evolution. Yes. That's incredible. It's incredible. I think that that's even just one reason if you even need it to, besides the beautiful beaches and everything oh, else Cancun has to offer, to come here and see this museum. It's a must. It's special. From conservation to preservation, another museum worth visiting is Museo Maya de Cancun. For a look at more than 300 Mayan artifacts like stone, ceramic and jade, 
dating back centuries to Mexico's pre-Hispanic era. All this activity can really wear a girl out, and I can't think of a better way to rejuvenate than at one of Cancun's most luxurious spas. As I dip from one relaxing treatment into another, I feel fresh, pampered, and instantly renewed. And kicking back in a setting this beautiful is something I can definitely get used to. Coming up, I savor nearly every element of Mayan culture. Can I offer you guys a cricket? They like the chips. They like chips. They like chips. Yeah. First Look is sponsored in part by Riviera Maya, where paradise is forever. Plan your trip now at rivieramaya.com. Our exploration along Mexico's Caribbean coast brings us just south of Cancun to Riviera Maya. Here the region's stunning landscapes and distinct ecosystems are in full bloom. From reefs, to jungles, to mangroves, Mother Nature truly thrives in the Riviera Maya. First stop is popular beach town Playa del Carmen and its famous Quinta Avenida or Fifth Avenue, a pedestrian only street lined with shops, restaurants and entertainment. Stretching for more than 20 blocks, a walk down Fifth Avenue is best ended with a tasting of mezcal. The local adult beverage of choice, mezcal is made from agave, a plant native to Mexico. Unlike tequila, which is made from just blue agave, mezcal is distilled from a variety of agave plants that are then oven cooked, creating the drink's distinct smoky flavor and generally calls for sipping straight up. You're not mixing this with anything? It's got a smokiness to it. That one's a bit calmer, isn't it? Can I offer you guys a cricket? They like it chips. They're like they chips. Like chips. Yeah. Kind of, but not. For another taste of tradition, we visit ecological theme park Shkaret. Mayan for small inlet, Shkaret is actually a huge park measuring over 80 acres that celebrates all things Mexico. From its wildlife, to its culture, to its food. Nos vas a enseñar cómo hacer una tortilla. Claro que sí. I love tortillas. Se forma una bolita en la de la masa, lo pones aquí en la en medio de la bolsita y pones una mano acá y dándole vueltecita hasta que se extienda. Always by hand. Always by hand. Pega otra vez. Give it a little spanking. Up and spanking. Lo pega hacia acá. Good, Ashley. <laughs> Very good. Uh -huh. Woo! Yay! Yeah. Yeah. And so what ingredients are in the dough? Esta es como que es harina de maíz. Uh -huh. Es solo es agua y un poquito de sal. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> How do you know when the tortilla is done? Look at this. Oh yes, bubbles. El cuento de acá de nosotros nos dice que cuando ya está, se infla, ya se está lista para casarse uno. So you're good at making tortillas and now you're good and now ready to get married. That is that is good to know. The mind culture is millenniums deep. And much of that history can be traced back to just south of here, at one of the world's largest and the region's most famous cenotes, Dos Ojos. Spanish for two eyes, Dos Ojos is an underwater cave system and a hub of exploration, with replicas of its findings on display at the park's Museum of Prehistory. For thousands of years, the caves were dry, and uh, also humans used them all the time. No? This is the woman of Las Palmas. It's a lady that uh, lived uh, between 10 and 12,000 years ago. And as you can see, she looked a little bit older no, than uh, the 40 years that is estimated that she used to live. No? This is true. Also true is that a visit to Dos Ojos Park isn't complete without doing some exploring of your own. The cenotes were awesome. 
really cool, swimming in and out of the caves. As I was swimming around, I, I was remembering my little history lesson and I was thinking, oh my gosh, this is where they found the remains and the bones of these humans and animals and everything that's happened. I fully felt like I connected with nature today. I mean, you're, look at this, you're out here in the jungle, there's all this plant life, and then with the water and the erosion and the history, it's just all comes together, it's the circle of life. I've never been to Riviera Maya or Playa del Carmen. This is my first time and it's quite an experience. It's nothing like I've ever experienced before. Coming up in Riviera Maya, my date with Mother Nature gets sticky. <laughs> Among Riviera Maya's amazing natural splendors is UNESCO World Heritage Site, Sian Khan, translated from Mayan as place where the sky is born. Sian Khan Biosphere, it's one of the largest protected area in Quintana Roo. It's located between Tulum and Felipe Carrillo Puerto. And how large is Sian Khan? It's more than a million acres. We are right on the second entrance. That's a lot of land. A sanctuary land occupied by countless species of animal and plant life, including medicinal plants like the sacred chicle, or gum tree, once harvested by Mayans to aid in digestion. So gum was discovered here. Exactly. The ancient Maya discovered the chewing gum originally in the Yucatan Peninsula. <laughs> Which one of these is a gum tree? Oh, this one. This is a gum tree. That one. That one. That one there. They're everywhere. The huge one there, yes. And this is the sap from the this tree. This is the sap, exactly, like a milk. You want to try to move? Sure. So where does this gum going? They sell gum in Canada, in Germany, U.S. and Mexico. It's going all over the world, this gum. Yes. So now he's just cooling it off, huh? Yes. In it's fresh water. Fresh water, yes, from the cenote. It's pretty cool. I've never seen gum be made before. You want to touch? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's like putty. Yeah. Oh, you're good at that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ada? Good? It's chewy. <laughs> uh oh! Hey. Uh. <laughs> How's it going? After hanging in the jungle and walking around Muil, Maya's earliest runes, we cruise to Sian Khan's diverse system of freshwater wetlands. Oh wow! This is a, the man-made canal. Pretty narrow and a lot of mangrove roots. Wow! And watch your head by the branches. It's like bath water, it's beautiful. This is one of the best ecosystems in the world. You can see how the mango roots avoid erosion into the mud. And it works also like a fish nursery. Right there is where a lot of bromelias, orchids, and cactus live in. There on top is where birds can make a nest. It's beautiful. There's only one way to fully appreciate Sian Khan, and that's by holding your breath and taking it all in. <gasps> Alberta, thank you so much. This is so beautiful, such amazing place. Thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. I like it. My breathtaking journey along the Riviera takes us now to the beach town of Tulum for a deluxe approach to becoming one with nature at unique hideaway, Azulik. We are an eco hotel or a sanctuary of reconnection. We try to respect the nature here as much as possible. Mm -hmm. For example, we don't cut out the trees. We use the water from the cenotes, wow. which is sacred in the Mayan culture. And also we use natural materials, mainly wood. Nature is also at the heart of Azulik's Mayan spa. With treatments like their Copal Cleanse, which uses incense made from tree resin, yoga, sound healing, with a view. 
how can you not enjoy a massage in the scenery here at Azalik? I mean, the wind, the sound of the ocean, you're in a tree house with a woman rubbing clay and leaves on you. I mean, sure. <laughs> I've never heard of Kopal before. It smells woodsy, but fresh at the same time. You feel like you're getting a cleanse. I definitely feel like I connected with Mother Nature here. I also feel like I connected within myself, and so it's kind of a full circle. It feels nice, good for the soul. Nature, adventure, culture, leisure. If this is the getaway you seek, then Mexico's Quintana Roo is where you want to be. Until next week, adios. Thank you.